Okay, absolute beauty there, Sime. Now, this video, we're gonna to talk to those players who are thinning the golf ball. If we put players in two brackets of poor shots, we've got players who thin or scull these shots. It goes too low and too far over the back of the green. Uh, and those who duff or hit it fat, so behind. Now, we do see a commonality between both of these, really, at the end of the day, of usually the effect can be different, so a thin or a fat, uh, can come from the same cause. Absolutely. But we're gonna talk about really the mindset that some players have, which is encouraging them to thin the golf ball. And then from a tour player's perspective, nine times winner here with Simon Dyson, we're gonna get a better understanding of something quick and actionable they can focus on and feel when they're playing rather than getting too caught up in the technicalities. Yeah. So basically, like you just summed it up, the thin and the fat all come from players who will try and help the ball up. They come in very shallow mm -hmm. and they're almost trying to help that ball up. Yeah. Whereas the loft on the club is and the grooves yeah. are what is gonna get that ball airborne in the trajectory that you want it. So yeah, worst common fault again, the lame left. Mm -hmm. And then they'll almost try and push it back online. Yeah. So straight away that drops the club on the inside and comes shallow. Mm. And that's where I feel like most players get the thin and the fat from. For sure, absolutely. Now, one thing to always keep in the back of your mind here, guys, is that these golf clubs are designed to help the golf ball go up. We don't need to help it up through our intention of leaning back and trying to scoop. That's why it's built with this angle. So the real uh, main focus point when it comes to improving your strike, be it the fat or the thin, is simply just learning how to hit the ground in the same spot every single time. And in your practice swing signs, and we always see tour pros do this before they hit the shot, they're always getting a feel of how that club's interacting with the turf. Yeah. Not only what it feels like on the club, guys, but also the type of contact. Is it diggy? Is it gliding? But then also the location, right? There's no point, and you must see this all the time, if they have a yeah. couple of practice swings, you'll notice when Simon does these with intent, see how he's brushing in line with where the golf ball lay. He's rehearsing exactly what he, what he wants to perform. Now, I don't know about you, but I see far too many players doing little practice swings, missing the ground completely, hitting yeah. back here and over here. They're just rehearsing a poor shot. So uh, having that intent in practice swings is very important. But then on top of that, mate, what are those feels through the ball that players can use to ensure that they're not thinning it? So the first one for me would be the angle that the club comes down mm -hmm. onto the ball. Like I say, you, you get a lot of guys aiming left and it comes inside and too shallow. Yeah. You, all the top chippers, pitchers of the ball, yeah. never get the club going on the inside. Very true. Never. Mm. So if you can keep it on plane or even outside, your angle of attack's gonna change straight away. Yeah. And then it's all about getting that strike with the ball and turf together. From there, so what Simon's saying is that the angle of attack is the golf club essentially comes down steeper, right? And one of the big faults for players thinning is if we're hitting in the direction of the target here, the golf club comes in simply too shallow and we don't get underneath the equator of the ball and that's what causes those poor shots. So Simon, if you just do some of those practice swings talking about feeling like it doesn't get too shallow and I'm gonna hold my club shaft here behind you, we're gonna see that Simon's gonna swing above that both back and through. Now. When he does that, that's gonna encourage the bottom of the swing to move forward more than anything, ensuring that he's able to also hit a little bit more down on the ball, which is going to nullify the chance that he is going to thin it as much. Now, you can always still manufacture something funky and hit a thin shot, but it's one of the main reasons players hit thin shots, isn't it? 100%, it is the main reason. Yeah, perfect. Okay, so I want you to have a couple more practice swings, mate. Just getting that feel, guys. Let's watch where his club head moves in the backswing and in the follow through relative to the target. You see a nice little brushing. His intention is in line with the golf ball. And when you've got that feel sign, walk in there and pitch one up towards that pin. I'll tell you what, could not get much pure than that. 